to the Republic of Cyprus. I call on His Excellency the Ambassador of the, of the Republic of Korea, Mr. Yoon Lee Lee. Ambassador of the Lao People's Democratic Republic, Mr. Natsami Kiyomani. Your Excellency, Mr. President Nikos Anastasiades, please kindly allow me to present the letters of credence by which your Excellency, Mr. President, has appointed me the Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenty Potentiary of the Lao PDR to the Republic of Cyprus, as well as the letters of recall of my predecessor, Your Excellency. Kingdom of Cambodia, Mr. Tai Chu. Your Excellency, Mr. President, please allow me to present the letter of present by which His Majesty the Rong Sai Harmony, King of Cambodia, has appointed me as ambassador discovery and plenipotentiary of the Kingdom of Cambodia to the Republic of Cyprus, as well as the letter of the cause of my predecessors. Your 
Your Excellency, Mr. President, allow me to present to you uh, the letters of credence by which the President of the Republic of Slovenia, Mr. Borut Pachor, appointed me to be, to be the next Ambassador, Plenipotentiary and Extraordinary to the Republic of Cyprus, as well as the letters of recall of my predecessor. Thank you. just received the letters of uh, Cretans appointing you as uh, new ambassadors and high commissioners of your countries to the Republic of Cyprus, I would like to assure you that the government of Cyprus will provide you with every assistance necessary in the fulfillment of your important mission. Cyprus ascribes great importance in further advancing our bilateral and multilateral cooperation and extending it in a vast array of uh, new fields uh, for the mutual benefit of our countries and peoples. To this end, I am certain that with your valuable support, 
positive and concrete results will be achieved. In the midst of uh, the ongoing war in Ukraine, we underline the need to strengthen our cooperation and join action with partner countries in order to address complex geopolitical challenges. We consider such an effort as a vital element of our foreign policy and part of our broader aim for the settlement of disputes through dialogue and peaceful means. Our firm commitment to democratic principles, multilateralism, and the respect for every country's sovereignty, territorial integrity, and independence are the pillars upon which we are building our mutual engagement and trust. Excellencies, I'm now turning for a little to the Cyprus issue. You are aware of the protracted stalemate, despite our efforts, despite my efforts to help kickstart the negotiating process, including, amongst others, uh, the proposals for game-changing confidence-building measures. You might also be aware or cognizant of the reactions by Turkey and Mr. Tatar, the leader of the Turkish Cypriot community, advocating the two-state solution or recognition of sovereign equality. You are familiar with the intensified efforts unfortunately by Turkey, to upgrade the status of its supporting identity in occupied Cyprus. For instance, by including it as an observer at the recent meeting of the Organization of Turkic States. States. I must point out that, uh, to its credit, the European Commission immediately rejected the Turkish move that manifestly violates UN Security Council resolutions and the UN Charter, while also severely damaging the efforts to create an environment conducive to resuming settlement talks. Besides, there is no doubt in my mind that, in spite of the current difficulties and provocations or aggression acts by Turkey, a comprehensive and viable diplomatic solution based always on a federation or a bizonal, by communal federation, with the features as set out in the relevant UN Security Council resolutions, can still be within reach. Let me quickly remind you that on 17th November, I held a constructive meeting with the UN Assistant General Secretary Miroslav Jensa. I was satisfied to hear from Mr. Jensen underlying the UN Secretary General's, and I quote, commitment to stay engaged in the process of reaching for common ground, of searching for common ground and finding understanding to move forward the issue of the settlement. That is why we insist for the UN Secretary General to appoint a new envoy for Cyprus. The appointment of such an envoy could even now, despite the divergent positions, lead to consultations and deliberations with the parties and provide critical support for the resumptions of the negotiations. At the same time, we now we that Ankara, we know that Ankara has expectations for regional gas to reach through Turkey, particularly in the midst of the fast-changing geopolitical context, which also affects the dynamics in the Eastern Mediterranean. What I would like to say is that by solving the Cyprus question, the Cyprus question a lot of existing problems affecting Turkey as well will be lifted, will be normalized, and so we can bring stability and peace in the whole region. Ladies and gentlemen, Cyprus and Slovenia traditionally enjoy excellent bilateral relations with effective collaboration as partners in the EU 
and the other multilateral fora. Political dialogue lies at the heart of our relationship, while efforts to further enhance our economic, scientific, cultural, and educational cooperation are both welcome and vastly supported. Ambassador Bozar, our close cooperation with the EU, as well as our MET9 group following Slovenia's membership, which we strongly supported, empower us to jointly address common challenges and pursue policies for the benefit of Europe and our citizens. Despite the geographical distance, and I'm talking now about Norway, that separates our two countries, Cyprus and Norway, have established an enduring dialogue and, and cooperative relationship on multiple levels based on the shared values of peace, justice, freedom, and democracy. Ambassador uh, Jacqueline, Cyprus accession to the European Union and Norway's participation in the European economic area provide a solid foundation upon which we can further promote our cooperation in new areas merchant shipping, energy, and tourism, to name a few. Now, following the establishment of our diplomatic uh, relations back in 2000, Cyprus and Cambodia enjoy sound relations based on mutual respect and understanding. Within this framework, Ambassador Chun, we stand ready to strengthen our ties in a number of important fields such as tourism, education, maritime, health, investment and trade, but most importantly, people-to-people -people, uh, contacts. Also, in view of our upcoming summit, summit next week in Brussels, Cyprus remains a staunch supporter of the further deepening of the EU-ASEAN cooperation. Coming to our neighborhood, Cyprus and Bahrain, share deep-rooted bonds of friendship and an excellent cooperation as witnessed during the, my successful official visit accompanied by five ministers to the Kingdom of Bahrain in 2021, in which two important bilateral agreements were signed, as well as my recent meeting with His Royal Highness the Crown Prince in Sharm el-Sheikh this past November. I am also particularly pleased, Ambassador Al Jalahma, of our decision to open an embassy in Bahrain this coming year, which was unfortunately delayed due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Guided by our shared adherence to effective multilateralism, and especially following our membership to the European Union in 2004, Cyprus and Lithuania enjoying, enjoy cordial relations, which I am glad to attest, Ambassador Skerstonet, uh, I'm not sure if I'm correctly pronounce your name, but uh, it's the same happening with my name, which is like a train. Whenever uh, they are trying to pronounce it, they are saying Anastasitis um, or a lot of things, but I understand that they are talking about me. So, Excellency, Forgive me, you have done a mistake in pronouncing your own name. So, uh, I was talking about our relations and the growth of our relations. In this respect, we look forward to forge even closer economic ties with Lithuania and to explore the potential for a mutually beneficial cooperation in the important field of research and innovation. My government ambassador, Gito, is keen to establish a prolific cooperation with Uruguay, Uruguay in the fields of education as well as renewable energy resources in which your country is a pragmatic example. Rest also assure that Cyprus, in spite of the size of the country, in its capacity as an EU member state, is in full support of the EU Mercosur trade agreement that will facilitate and enhance trade between our regions further. Uruguay is a country with strong commitment to the advancement of global peace and security, and to this end, 
its presence in many United Nations peacekeeping forces is notable and much appreciated. The said Mayor General Heber Ficoli has been a commander of ANFISIP along with personal, personnel from Uruguay in Sector 1. For that valuable contribution, Cyprus will always be grateful. Now, the establishment of diplomatic ties with the People's Republic of Laos 22 years ago marked a growing trend in the will of both countries to develop a mutually beneficial bilateral cooperation. Since then, Cyprus and Laos have developed friendly relations despite the considerable geographical distance between us, increasing their collaboration both on a bilateral and a multilateral level. Let me reiterate yet again our readiness to strengthen the EU-ASEAN political dialogue and cooperation. This will be our aim in Brussels next week on the 14th of December. Our bilateral relations now with the Republic of Korea is uh, progressively growing stronger with a mutual desire to further elevate it in the years ahead, expanding our ventures in areas like tourism, education, maritime, investments and trade. <coughs> Excuse me. Cyprus and Korea, Ambassador Lee, are two countries that share a strong friendship founded on a common adherence to democratic values, norms and principles. In that regard, allow me to take this opportunity to underline your country's pivotal role and growing significance both at regional and international level, contributing to wider efforts for achieving peace and stability. As I look back to the 30th anniversary of our formal diplomatic relations last year, I'm very pleased to note, Ambassador Brigitte, that Cyprus and Latvia have over these three decades managed to build a dynamic and uh, multifaceted relationship based on mutual respect and adherence to our common principles and values, both at the bilateral level as well as in the EU framework following our joint membership in 2004. Last but certainly not least, High Commissioner Asselin, Cyprus and Canada are bound by close ties of friendship and also enjoy a long history of working together to counter threats to peace and security. Both our countries are belonging to the Commonwealth. We have a huge uh, diaspora living in uh, Canada. We have common grounds, common history, common civilization, I might say. Our effective cooperation with Canada at the international level is mostly evident by our work together within our Commonwealth family, the OSCE, the United Nations, as well as the Francophonie, amongst many others. Taking this opportunity, I would also like to express my gratitude for Canada's valued participation in the United Nations peacekeeping force in Cyprus and to pay tribute to all the Canadian soldiers who sacrificed their lives in Cyprus and those who have served with utmost responsibility. Excellencies, in welcoming you once again, uh, I sincerely wish you every success in the performance of your high duties aimed at achieving greater mutual understanding and promoting, providing new impetus to the development of the relations between our countries. Thank you very much for your Attention. Thank you.